Zach, obviously, you know, uh, you're a, kind of a hot commodity over the offseason. Just what, what do you feel like you maybe learned about yourself as a coach over the last year and over this offseason? And what did that kind of mean to you maybe as a coach? I don't – I mean, I don't know if that's a two-part question. I, what I learned from the season is I, I got to become a heck, a heck of a lot better coach because we didn't play well enough on defense to uh, achieve all of our goals. And so – you know, you, you spend the offseason studying the film and, and seeing all the bad calls you made or the mistakes you made on maybe how you taught something or, uh, you know, any, anytime you don't play well enough on defense, that means you didn't do a good enough job coaching it. And so uh, every single one of us on the staff, you know, that that's the that's the message from Coach Leach. We got to find ways to improve as coaches because we got to find ways to improve our players on the field. David. Coach, with just two days into practice, um, just what do you think of the physical conditioning of your defensive guys and the job Coach Brown has done over the winter? Uh, I mean, Coach, Coach Brown does a tremendous job. I mean, there's a reason in the offseason, you know, we just kind of hand the, hand the keys over to him and let him let him run the show. It's because he, he knows exactly how to how to get guys strong and in shape and, and prepared for, you know, in this case, get them prepared get him in tip top shape for spring practice. And then we'll do the same thing after spring ball. He'll take over and he'll do what he does and he'll have them raring to go for the season. Joel. Zach, when you look at this defense, obviously the loss of Errol and Kobe are, are pretty huge. Um, just how do you go about replacing that leadership and, and not just leadership, but obviously the Errol spot a key position at middle linebacker and things. Is that, is that kind of Buki's spot to kind of step into there and, and try and fill that those shoes? Well, he's running with the ones right now, so he, he's got the, the first shot at it. But spring spring practice is all about competition. And so uh, we'll, we'll try multiple guys there, and, and we'll find, uh, you know, who, who does the best job and who, who gives us the best chance to play good defense and, and win. I happen to see Errol at practice on Thursday, and I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm all for filing a petition or something to see if he wants to come back and play another season. But uh, right now, it's Buki and everyone else in that room's job to compete and win the job. Go back to David. Coach, looking and starting at the defensive line there, are you looking at ways that possibly of having uh, Jaden Crumity and Nathan Pickering on the field at the same time, or do you still expect to rotate them at nose? Well, who are you asking for? All the other teams in the conference? Or no, I'm, uh, like I, it's almost the exact same answer to the previous question, right? We're going to try a, a million different combinations and uh, find the best eleven football players and get them on the field. You know, maybe we're not a three-three-five. Maybe we're a Maybe we're a four two five next year. Who knows? Joel. Obviously Martin Emerson and Emmanuel Forbes are gonna get a lot of preseason praise and things for, for what their ability is and what they're able to do. Is there anything you need to I guess try and keep those guys in check to make sure uh, you don't get the big head or something like that heading into a season? Or is there anything that even needs to be said to, to guys like that? I think I think both guys have their head on right. Coach McBath does a, a tremendous job of of running that room, and, and you know there, there's plenty of there's plenty of film from last season where those guys have, they've already watched it and they know uh, you know there's plays they could have been better on. And so fortunately they're they're the right right type of guys. You know they're they're all about improvement. So they spend more time critiquing their you know their maybe their negative plays than getting a big head about their positive plays but that's the other benefit of going against coach Leach's air raid every day is if you're if you're a db if you if you're in coverage at all that'll that'll quickly humble you going against that offense ben zach obviously errol and kobe are guys that were really vocal last year just who do you kind of see stepping into those roles and, and being some of those vocal guys on your side of the ball I don't know. I think it's way too early to tell. I mean, to be honest with you, if we don't have any vocal guys, it don't really matter as long as we have guys who show up and, you know, play the game the right way and do things the right way and, and play the type of defense we expect to play. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure, like every year, guys emerge. Some guys tend to be vocal guys. Some guys uh, are, are more quiet. Frankly, all I care about is we got 11 guys out there who are flying around and playing defense the right way. David? Coach, is uh, Fred Peters at 100% right now, and is he still looking at that dog safety position, or uh, who else might be working at those, at, you know, to challenge him at that job? Uh, I believe he's 100%. I mean, he's out there practicing, so he wouldn't be out there if he didn't get the full go from the training staff. Um, I, I imagine, like everyone else, right? He, he got to get run yourself into into game game shape, 
And so he's probably got some conditioning to do. But, no, in terms of health-wise, he's a, he's 100% full live football. And then, obviously, that's a, a very deep room right now. You know, we got some guys, Dylan Lawrence, uh, Janari Dean, some, you know, probably some other guys I'm forgetting who had season-ending injuries last year. Well, now those guys are getting a chance to go through a spring practice and, and show they can compete. And so um, I think if I'm – Unless I'm mistaken, I think the whole safety room is, is returning. And so uh, we ought to have a, a great competition this spring for those for those three positions. Joel? Zach, is, is Jalen Green kind of in the mix for those spots? And just kind of what, is, what are some of your early impressions of, of Jalen Green? And uh, obviously you may not, I mean, I haven't seen him much here, but uh, on film and, and just kind of your early thoughts on him. Yeah, I think, you know, with Jalen, obviously it's going to be kind of the, the same routine answer I've been given is we're going to try him out at a variety of number of spots and see where he best fits and helps us where he's most natural. Uh, obviously, we've only had two practices just, you know, in helmets and shorts. So that that's not playing football. You know, football is played with pads on when you're striking, delivering blows and hitting. So about the only thing we've been able to tell right now with anyone is whether they can run and change directions and have a general idea of their assignments. And I would say right now, at least at least he's shown we know why we, we recruited him to come here because, you know, he can run and change directions like like you would expect a Division One football player to do. So, you know, pads go on on Tuesday. We'll start seeing if he if he can play football along with everyone else. I mean, every single guy out there has got to show they can play football. Ben. Zach, obviously C.J. Morgan missed a lot of time last year and, and didn't totally get healthy till the end. Just what's it like to be able to have him back at least going through spring ball and, and as an older guy, just have him in the mix? Yeah, I mean, you talk to C.J., I mean, he just the maturity oozes out of him, you know. He's, he's obviously played a lot of football, you know, played a lot of SEC games, you know, two years ago. And so that experience is, you know, I mean, it is incredibly valuable. And, and he knows, you know, he's got a guy who – doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. He understands that there, there's highs and lows in this game. And so he, he just follows the mentality that Coach Leach preaches, right? Play the next play. Don't matter what happened on the previous play, you play the next play. And so when you got older guys in your program who have that type of maturity and experience, uh, you know, they're incredibly valuable. David. Coach, last fall, most obviously the teaching you had to do with the team was, you know, preseason, in season. What what's the difference of being able? To, I apologize for our deadly attack. More keys going nuts here at the house. Um, what's the advantage in having a spring to actually teach, instruct, evaluate, and not have the game pressure? Yeah, I think the really nice thing that you you probably take for granted maybe as a coach because is uh, you know in spring practice right we get a day off in between practices so you can really get in the meeting room, dig into the films, spend a lot of time coaching and teaching. Whereas in fall camp. You know, you're practicing every day. You're trying to get ready for a season. And so, uh, and you have, I mean, you have them longer in fall camp. Don't get me wrong, but it's nice in spring to be able to have a little slowed, it's a little slowed down. You know, you're not ramping up for an opening game. You got time a day in between to really, you know, dig into the film and then you can have one-on-one -on -one meetings with guys. And so uh, hopefully, hopefully we make the most of it and we increase our understanding of not, not only just the defense, but the entire game of football. 